You ever read the synopsis for something and think, there's no way this is a real show? Well, it turns out Netflix will greenlight pretty much anything at this point because now we're getting their newest masterpiece, Emily in Paris. I've seen a lot of talk on the internet about this show and I thought to myself, how bad could it really be? I mean, surely everyone's just being hyperbolic. Well, I guess it's time to find out. Let's take a walk. We start off with our main character, Emily, and her boss, Madeline, both of whom work for some, like, cosmetic marketing firm or something like that. Anyway, we see them as they're getting some exciting news about what's going on with Madeline. Chicago-based Gilbert Group expands international portfolio with acquisition of French luxury marketing company Savoir. Oh. Gilbert Group that Madeline Wheeler named director of marketing for Franco Firm. Yes! I'm here to prove that a master's in French does not go to waste. I mean, yeah, hey, how lucky for you that your degree is finally maybe going to be worth something. Hey, you hear that, Jessica? Just hold on a little bit longer. I swear your engineering degree is going to kick in any day now. Anyway, Madeline continues on gushing about her upcoming transfer to Paris. It's going to be amazing for you. Oh, I have been dreaming of moving to Paris forever. I mean, French men, they love older women, you know? Look at their president. He's young, he's hot. He married his school teacher. So right after this, Madeline asks Emily to try out some new perfume they're marketing or whatever, and she gives us this wonderfully bizarre nonsense. This is an opportunity for both of us. Come here, I want you to try this. What is it? The Le. It's the latest fragrance from Maison Leveau. Mm. I'll be handling them. Their account in Paris. What do you think? It's like wearing poetry. <laughs> it smells like wearing poetry? What does that mean, Emily? You're just putting words together in a speaking spell? How'd you get this job? And right then, we all find out that somehow, for some mysterious reason, Madeline is prego. Now, what this means for us is two important things. One, Madeline can't slash won't go to Paris now because she has to deal with this whole, like, demon tumor thing growing inside of her. And two, Emily has now been asked to take her place and move to Paris because, as she explains to her boyfriend later that night, But now that she's pregnant, she's decided she's not going to take the job in Paris. So there goes your promotion? Not exactly. They still need someone there, like American eyes and ears to help with the whole transition. So they asked me if I would take the job. Ah, yes, the American girl needs to go to Europe and teach them how to do anything. Because everything in the U.S. works so well. I mean, why wouldn't she? Hey, uh, so you know what you guys should do is fry some butter on a stick and then eat it while pretending you have health care. And so, as you may or may not have gathered from the title of the show, Emily has no choice but to live her dream of having a rent-free apartment in the middle of Paris while she works for a major fashion marketing company. Ah, shucks, girl just can't catch a break, huh? Although, to be fair, there is the slight caveat that now she and her boyfriend are going to be long distance for a while. And she's a young, pretty professional woman in a Netflix rom-com series, but I'm sure everything's gonna be fine. You got nothing to worry about, Mr. Totally Average Guy batting way out of his league. Here's a spreadsheet I made for the next year. Weeks when you might be able to come to Paris, times I can come back to Chicago, taking into consideration vacation and sick days. Wait, you don't speak French. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> you look worried. I'm not worried. It's the French who should be worried. Yeah, come on, I'm not worried. <laughs> Why would I be worried? I mean, you told me I'm good enough and that bigger's not always better, and you meant that, right? Emily? Hello? Anyway, so Emily eventually heads off to Paris, and we get this montage where she's being driven around the city, and eventually she ends up at her new company apartment with a breathtaking view of the city and a complimentary creepy real estate agent. Oh my god, I feel like Nicole Kidman in Moulin Rouge. You've got all of Paris at your feet. Are you hungry? Would you like to have a coffee or...? Oh, actually, I have to get to my office. Oh, maybe you want to have a drink tonight? I have a boyfriend. In Paris? In Chicago. So you don't have a boyfriend in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. I mean, I tried that same line back in high school and it didn't work for me either. Hey, uh, Kelsey, uh, d uh, d do you have a boyfriend? Uh, yeah, but he goes to a different school. You wouldn't know him. Oh, so you don't have a boyfriend for this high school then? And thank goodness for that. After this, Emily goes into the office of the company that her employer just acquired. And you know, she's just gosh darn ready to take on the day and do whatever she does for a living. Ma fille américaine est là. Bonjour. Je vous attendais pas avant demain. Comment s'est passé le voyage, le nouvel appartement, tout ça? You lost me a bonjour. So being the strangely tone-deaf fish-out-of-water story that this is, the whole premise is that Emily is this hip young American girl who goes to Paris to hippify this French marketing firm's social media game. Whatever that means. It's not just about the number of followers. It's about content, trust, interest, and engagement. The French are masters of social media. True. 
but Americans invented it. Which is why I hope to become a valuable member of your team by adding an American point of view to your fabulous French clients. C'est une cata. Which I gotta say is pretty hilarious to me that she's supposed to be some kind of social media guru or whatever because like we see her posting on whatever app she's using and she only has like 50 followers. A girl who looks like this on today's internet? All she has to do is post one selfie and like one picture of a foot and she could start her own religion. Anyway, so after her very productive first day of talking to everyone like they're five. For those of you who haven't met me, I'm Emily Cooper and I'm so excited to be here in Paris. Your name, monsieur? My name is Luke. Yes, Luke. Why are you shouting? She goes back to her apartment that night, but you'll never guess what happens. Come on. Oh, this can't be happening. Come on. See what I tell you? Didn't I say it? I said you go to France, you start knocking on random doors, and then wham, bam, 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 bam. Perfectly groomed hot guy just shows up out of nowhere, making you feel all tingly down in your jingle. You know what I'm saying? I thought this was my apartment fifth floor. This is the fourth floor. Fifth floor. Right. So the next chunk of the episode is just her being ignored and bullied by all her co-workers because that's what French people do apparently. And of course we see her just being baffled by all this quirky French stuff like real food and working hours and all the things that anyone could have been able to figure out with one Google search in like five minutes of reading. Or you know, just common sense things that any functioning adult should know, like uh, maybe don't take pictures of random people's kids. So after putting up with her co-workers shenanigans for a while, we get a slight breakthrough with the professional Back to the Future cosplayer, Luke, who sees Emily sitting by herself at a little cafe thing and turns out there's maybe Maybe a little bit more going on than we initially thought. You know, we are all a little afraid of you. What? Your ideas, they are more new. Maybe they are better. <laughs> and maybe we feel we have to work harder. It's a balance. Ex exactly, a balance. And I think the Americans have the wrong balance. You live to work. We work to live. I mean, I just work so I can ignore the ever-growing void inside my soul caused by years of being called gifted as a child and slowly realizing that all that really means is just depressed, but creative sometimes. And so now Emily has a new resolve to cut her co-workers some slack and maybe she can try reaching across the table and, you know, treat them as people instead of carbon copies of ugly Betty characters. Then, at the very end of the episode, she shorts out the electricity for her entire apartment building because she's just trying to massage out her stiff shoulders, I assume. There you are. So, this might be the stupidest premise for a show I've ever seen. And believe you me, I've made like 30 something videos about Riverdale, okay, so I know what I'm talking about. Maybe it gets better later on, I don't know, but I feel like they wasted a lot of great acting talent on just like the worst show. Hey everybody, first of all, I just want to say thank you for downloading and playing the game. Seems like a lot of you really enjoy it. I'm going to be starting a contest to find the first three people who can finish all 200 levels of the game, okay? If you can do this, if you're one of the first three people to finish all 200 levels, then you're going to get to be in an upcoming video. If possible, you'll get to record a line that will play in the video and or I will draw you as a character who will appear in the video. So if this appeals to you at all, you got to reach the end of the game and be one of the first three people to finish all 200 levels, okay? So, good luck. Now, it's no secret that I make a living on watching, like, bad shows and movies. Like, that's that's my job at this point, is I specifically find really cheesy bad shows. For the most part, there are some shows that I genuinely like. You know, I liked Cobra Kai, I liked Anne with an E, I liked Gilmore Girls. You know, there's, there's shows I like. And certainly Netflix has no shortage of, of dumb shows to watch, but this there's something about this show, Emily in Paris. Like, you know, I did a video about, for example, um, Love is Blind, which is just, like, the worst, like, a dating reality show, like, I've ever seen. <laughs> it's really... It's re Real dumb but like you know what you're getting with that show like there's no smoke and mirrors with that show it's like you know what you're getting into it's a show about people they're dating but they can't see each other and do they fall in love or not like like you know what you're getting you know it's gonna be trash Emily in Paris is kind of advertised as you know it's from the creator of sex in the city and it's supposed to be like sort of a modern take on like the modern girl we're doing her thing and falling in love and do whatever but something about it the, the way it's written the way it's it's done the way it's shot the way it just it's like the stupidest show it's so, it's so dumb you just the whole 
whole premise is, seems just hilariously tone deaf. Like, you probably could have made this show back in the early 2000s and people probably would have thought it was good. But nowadays, just the whole idea of, like, this American girl goes to Europe and shows them how it's done. But then she also kind of learns from them a little bit, too. Now, again, I haven't seen the whole show and, I, you know, I don't know exactly how it pans out. But just that's the premise, right? That's the, the basic premise. The introduction of the show is that. You know, and, and like, every show relies on certain tropes and stereotypes to get by because that's just kind of how they are. But, like, this show is just, it's just nothing but, like... You know, American girl goes to another country and oh, look at how quirky everything and everyone is. Haha, ha, this is so, isn't this hilarious how weird all these French people are? And like, it's just like, how can you make this nowadays? Anyway, everybody, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Let me know if there's any shows you would like me to do. Uh, send me, I have like a fan mail email. It's uh, alexmyerscontact at gmail.com. Email there and tell me what shows or movies you think uh, you would like me to do. I have a game out right now. I'm doing a little contest, as you saw, about... Uh, um, there's this game in the app store you can download it the first three people who can finish all 200 levels then you will get to be in a video so if that interests you at all uh do that i have a podcast out it's like a dating story dating relationship kind of uh, advice type of podcast if you're interested in that link is down below for that as well and above all else, everybody have a great day and i'll see you all next time